I don't want to seem like I'm being overdramatic. I really want to beat this man today. Like, genuinely, I despise him. Like, if you can you hear me, Mikel? You're going down, son. Christ, I know, I know how to intimidate the opposition. It's a big game. The transfer window's open. Let's get into this. How is it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 20 of our Newcastle Let's Play. We are back. Adi Ami is the World Under-21 Footballer of the Year. That's pretty cool. 51 matches played for us, 27 goals, 17 assists, a 7.41 rating. We're going to have a little bit of an, a kind of halfway point in the season recap today where we look over the squad. This man right here has been absolutely sensational this season. A 7.5 rating in the Premier League after 18 matches. He's doing quite well. And another man who's doing reasonably well, Masiala here. European golden boy as well. Look at this. This is absolutely sensational. Newcastle dominating the future of world football. Um, and Musiala, like Adiemi, has been quite good this year. Nine goals, seven assists, two player of the matches, a 7.45 rating. He has been pretty sensational. Seven goals and three assists from centre mid. He's provided when he's played out wide, when he's played down the middle. He's done pretty good too. Um, yeah, a player who's had quite a lot asked of him and... He's lived up to all my expectations and more. Now, it is worth noting we are in January now. So as a result, the transfer window is open. There's a few deals that might be going on. Matty Longstaff is potentially on his way to Toulouse. It would be a loan deal with an obligation to buy if he plays 10 games for them. Um, just a player who doesn't really play in the first team. And another player who has been a somewhat present member of the first team is Emerson Royal. Of course, we were looking to sell him in the summer. No one really came in for him. He's played a game here and there, and to be fair, he's done pretty well when we've called upon him. But the right back position is just an area of the pitch where there's quite a lot of competition and I can't find a spot for him in the team. So we're looking to move him on. We have accepted a bid from Borussia Dortmund of 18 million with a 30% profit sell-on clause, considering that less than 12 months ago we signed him for 10 million. It makes a lot of sense for all parties involved. Now, in terms of transfers on the ins... I have made one. I've signed a 16-year-old from Derby County for 3.5 million that could rise up to four. That man is Peter Paul. Um, this man is pretty nuts, <laughs> if I might say so myself. He is 16. He is playing for the England under-21s, and he is a right-back who has great teamwork, great work rate. His physicals are so solid. He has a load of potential to hopefully live up to. And, uh, I mean, he's a League One quality player now. He's going to be in the England squad at some point in the future, I imagine. Uh, so, yeah, keep an eye on him. Probably not good enough for the first team right now. But, uh, yeah, a year or two, Peter Paul could be starting for Newcastle. Another youngster who we've not signed just yet, but I'm hoping we're going to be able to pick up, is Junior Miantudila. That's... That just doesn't sound right. We'll just call him Junior. It's quite a cool footballing name, Junior. He's 17 years old. His contract expires at the end of the year. I've made a move for him based entirely on the list of other teams that want him. I've not fully scouted him yet. I don't know exactly how good he is, but I'm just kind of of the mindset of, with all these teams making bids to sign him at the end of his contract, um, he must be good. If he isn't good and we do end up winning his signature, it's going to be a bit awkward. We are maybe looking to make some moves in the market. There's not a load of money to spend. The good news is you might remember the likes of Adiemi, uh, who had lots of teams interested in him a month or two ago. All that interest has vanished. I don't know where it's gone. I'm hoping it's not going to come back. Of course, both him and Musiala, the two players we bigged up today, do have release clauses, which I can't currently negotiate out of their contracts. Uh, yeah, still working on that. Meanwhile... On the pitch, things are going exceptionally. We should probably talk about this. We're in January. Last time we were here, it was the end of November, and we'd just beaten Ajax, Chelsea, and Man City without conceding a goal. In our very next game, we beat Bayern 4-2, which meant that we were through in our Champions League group stage, and then against Benfica with a semi-rotated team, we won 2-0. And with this and the rotated team, we guaranteed top spot in our group. And with that, we got what should have been an easier draw, I don't think it necessarily has been. We have Atletico Madrid in the first knockout round of the Champions League. Not looking forward to that game when that comes around in a month or two's time. 
So some really emphatic wins in Europe that guaranteed us top spot. When it comes to the league, defensively we've not been as amazing as we were in the month of November, but we're still yet to concede more than a singular goal in the last month or so. Um, you can see here, we started things off with a 2-0 away win against Watford. Rotation very much a factor throughout this period of games, just because, as you can see, it's December. There's a crazy number of matches. Great to see Ransford Yeboa come into his own. He's been really, really good this year. Five goals, three assists in six matches. Um, he's only started three of those six matches. He's been an absolutely insane super sub, the kind of player who probably deserves more first-team football. So after a pretty good result and performance against Watford, we went and took on Aston Villa. And, I mean, Luca Digne got sent off after six minutes. Tamori got sent off after 83. And then Villa scored a last-minute equaliser. Yeah, Bitter doesn't quite cover how I felt about this one. I I was angry. The good news is we bounced back against Burnley. A 5-0 win there. Adiemi getting another goal in another game. Musiala picked up two. Ransford, Yeboah and Barboza getting on the score sheet. A draw against Bournemouth was certainly disappointing. Almada got the only goal for us in this game. He's been surprisingly good this year. He has seven assists in 17 league games. Uh, yeah, he's really been linking up the play nicely, playing both down the middle and out in the wide areas from time to time. You can see here a lot asked of him. He's done a pretty good job so far. And after that Bournemouth game, four wins on the bounce. We beat Leeds United 1-0, West Ham 4-1. Nice to see Adiemi getting a couple of goals yet again. In the Carabao Cup quarterfinal, we dispatched of Leeds 4-1. Calvert-Lewin scored all four goals. And then most recently, we took on Brentford. Of course, we played them back at the start of the season, you might remember. On this occasion, a slightly unconvincing 2-1 win. But a 2-1 win that sees us sit second in the league, seven points ahead of Arsenal with 18 games left of the year. Uh, at this point, we really have to get in Champions League football this year. And one thing that I should acknowledge, we are still unbeaten. Now, let's be honest, Liverpool are also still unbeaten. They're quite good. Um, in fact, I mean, they've conceded eight goals and scored 61. We can't really compete with that. From a defensive perspective, I think 12 goals against is pretty good. You can actually see here, ourselves and Manchester United have identical goals scored and against. So uh, playing them today... Maybe put a bet on a nil-nil draw. With it being January, it feels like a nice time to look at the squad and acknowledge the unsung heroes, the players who have played pretty well, maybe some of the disappointments. Although I feel like this season there's not really been too many disappointments. Of course, the obvious player to draw attention to is Gvardiol. 21 years old, signed for 84 million, lots of pressure on him, 7.26 average rating for him so far in the league. Um... I'm relatively happy with that. To be honest, between Guvardiol, Tamori, Mukiele, and even Ben Godfrey when we've called upon them, really, really solid ratings, especially from Mukiele, who, as you can see, operating as a wide centre-back, has been getting plenty of assists. In the right-back area, Livramento's been maybe a tiny bit underwhelming so far. Of course, signed with potential in mind, a 7.17 average rating being disappointing. Quite, kind of gives you an idea of where my standards are at for this year. They've Somewhat been elevated. I suppose really I'm comparing him to Luca Digny, whose name I always feel like I'm saying wrong. I, I failed French at school, so look, I'm never going to master his name. Maybe I should just call him Luca. Anyway, he's been signed for six million, four assists, two goals, a 7.45 rating. I think he might be right up there with average ratings in the league. In fact, when you look at it, he is alongside Adiemi and Musiala. Did anyone think he was going to be that good of a signing for us this year? I certainly didn't. He has really locked down the left-back position. I kind of feel sorry for Michaelenko. If there's one man who's been a tad disappointing this year, it's perhaps Declan Rice. In the league, a 6.97 rating isn't too terrible. To be honest, he's actually developed reasonably well, too. Uh, I wasn't really signing him with potential in mind, but there's been steady improvements everywhere. I think one thing to note is, at least from my experience with FM22, please let me know if yours has been different. Defensive midfielders just don't seem to get very good ratings. Um, I don't know. I feel like a few years ago, defensive midfielders, especially deep line playmakers, got crazy high ratings, and now they just get really low ones by comparison. So, Maybe I'm just looking for a way to justify Declan Rice not being a waste of money, but that's the excuse I'm going with as to why it's not his fault. Of course, Musiala, we've talked about 12 goals, 9 assists, his top draw. Almada's been getting plenty of assists as well. Calvert-Lewin has been the main outlet of goals this year. 18 he's got, and his big provider, of course, has been Adiemi alongside him. You can see seven goals in 13 for Calvert-Lewin. In terms of squad happiness, you can see here, it's just a sea of green. I feel like we've got the squad at a really nice size where this year we have been able to rotate things a lot 
but also keep pretty much all of the players happy. In terms of the hierarchy, for those wondering what is the state of play, you can see here uh, Tamori, Declan Rice and Calvert-Lewin considered the leaders. Um, it's got a very, very nice balance to it, hasn't it, now that I look at it? I feel like just we planned well, we prepared and... Uh, versus a situation you could be in where you just have too many players or players are unhappy and the playing time's not right and everyone wants new contracts. Everything's just going very well and very smoothly. I'm kind of waiting for it all to go horribly wrong at some point in the near future. For you Data Hub fans out there, um, here's a little overview of how things are looking. This year, we've really seen a shift, I suppose, in how we perform. Passing-wise... We still struggle quite a lot. We don't complete that many passes, but the passes we're completing this year are of a way higher percentage. Um, I suppose one thing that's worth being aware of and one thing that I would love to see with the Data Hub next year is the ability to separate our stats using the two different systems. This year has seen a bit of a pivot. Of course, we are going to play our five at the back system against United away from home. So against lesser opposition, we've switched to the 4 3 3 a lot this year. It would be lovely to be able to kind of split the two systems and be able to look at the statistics for both. Throughout the year, we really have alternated as well. There was part of me that when I set up this new system, I wondered. Am I just going to, you know, forget to alternate? Am I going to just gravitate towards one or the other? But we have switched it around. And I think the fact that we are unbeaten in the league, we're still in the Carabao Cup. We've only lost one game and that was in the Champions League. Um, kind of shows that both systems seem to work really well and they work with the players that we've got. One thing that is, of course, a massive advantage of managing a bigger club with the best players in the world is that you can have multiple systems where the players can fulfill a few different roles within a wider system. If you're managing in the, the National League, your players don't have the same flexibility. You can't just switch things at the click of, a, of your fingers and expect the players just to work. That has so far been the case here, though, which is great. I'm just, I'm a little bit surprised. I don't know if that's obvious. I'm just surprised at how well things are going. And as I tell you all about it, it does just make me more and more shocked. But anyway, for today's game, we're taking on Manchester United away from home. This is a big game. It's a scary game. It's a game that if we win, I really start to hope and pray that maybe we can hunt down Liverpool. Maybe we can go deep in the Champions League. We've been really, really solid this year uh, to the point where in matches like this that I would view as true tests, I've been rather impressed by how well we've done. I realise I've bigged this up so much today. I've talked about how happy I am. We're probably now going to just lose this one 1-0. One um, but we'll wait and see. Look at the United team. It's not that different to their team in real life. In fact, I think the entire starting eleven there actually play for Manchester United in real life. When it comes to our team, it's not quite the Newcastle team that we started with two and a half years ago. Right, an early highlight. I don't know if this fills me with excitement or dread. The fact it's Manchester United bringing it forward probably means it's the latter. Ronaldo hits it. Livakovic with one of the least convincing saves I've ever seen, but I think it was going in, so I will give him credit for it. Now we do have a corner to deal with, though. Bruno Fernandes whips in Varane, free header. Livakovic again. I'm not sung the praises of Livakovic nearly enough. Livakovic is very, very solid. Not like a, a world-beater goalkeeper, but I don't remember him ever making an absolute howler. Now we have our own corner. It's going to be whipped in. Calvert-Lewin hits the outside of the post. 20 minutes into this game, we've had 52% of the ball, a decent amount of possession. United having significantly more shots than us is maybe a little bit of a concern, but given the fact we're playing at Old Trafford, I somewhat expect them to dominate the play. So the fact we are, at least at the moment, controlling possession, I think is largely a good sign. De Jong tries to pick out Greenwood. Tamori reads it really well. Now with Musiala to Calvert-Lewin. It's going to hold up the play. You might remember at the start of the year, we changed the centre mid roles. Last year, we played with a Mazala and a ball in midfield on defend. That change has been pretty huge for us. Adiemi blocked once, blocked twice. Blimey, that was a crunching tackle. United living life dangerously. That was the best opportunity we've had. But no, just going to the point about centre mids, we've changed up the roles. Is that, I mean, we've just taken a quick free kick and it's nearly worked out. Um, that would have been mental if it had gone in. Let me try for a third time. The centre mid role changes we've done this year have actually worked really well. Mazala's, uh, I don't know, I like the Mazala role, but I feel like it's not as good as it used to be. And with it drifting into the half spaces, it often left the ball with a midfielder isolated. That's not an issue anymore. And Musiala playing the box to box midfielder role, the guy who was playing the Mazala role previously, lays that off. And Liveramento <laughs> smashes it into the top corner. I said to Liveramento, 
going into this game that he was, hasn't been as good as Luca Digne out on the left-hand side. Wanted a little bit more. That'll do me. He smashed it into the top corner. And with 90 seconds left of the first half, there's another highlight. Could it be a quick-fire double for us? Or am I getting carried away? I mean, United are on the attack. Also, I should issue an apology. Because I know Newcastle fans, I keep referring to Manchester United as United. Unfortunately, that is a lifetime habit. I'm not going to be able to kick as a Liverpool fan. I hope you can uh, understand and just forgive me. I know it's a cardinal sin. I'm a terrible person. Just, uh, I, I, I wish I could stop it. I can't. It's an issue. Uh, Fernandez, oh, don't do it to me. I'm so happy. We've got a goal ahead. We're playing great. Sancho heads over. We're fine. I will happily go in at the break 1-0 up. So, I mean, on the balance of play, we probably deserve that. As the half went on, we actually had less of the ball, but we started to create a lot more, um, which is good to see. Of course, we were rewarded with that very late goal in the half. Going to tell the players I'm delighted. Hope that complacency isn't going to creep in. But it, I feel like I'm just in a very happy place right now with this Newcastle team. Do you ever have that point in a FM save game where you feel like everything's clicked and it's all just going very well? I know some of you just tune in to watch me have meltdowns. That's not the case today. I mean, not yet. Oh, God. I mean, it still could happen. Greenwood hits it just over. That was a pretty good opportunity as well. Maguire bringing it out of defence for Manchester United here. Now with Jadon Sancho on the right-hand side. Plays it inside to Fernandez, who hits it. And Livakovic is making save after save. I should just say, if you're wondering, Jack, why did the face cam vanish halfway through the first half? I knocked the camera cable out. And I didn't realise till now. I'm just on the edge of my seat and I'm clearly far too invested. I'm just knocking stuff around. We are still 1-0 up. There's 57 minutes left and Rice has the ball. I would love a second here to ease the nerves. Andy Emmy's through. Andy Emmy finishes it. I think he's offside here. I feel like after Livakovic's goalkeeping heroics, the outfield players just need to do the rest of the job for him. My gut instinct is it's offside. And it is offside. He just went too early, Andy Emmy, there. It's a shame because the finish was really, really nice. Musiala threaded him through, but you can see he was off. The finish was nice though, weren't it? As in fact, from the offside, we're straight into another highlight here. It's with Cristiano Ronaldo. Luke Shaw on the overlap on the left-hand side, bringing it forward for them. Loads and loads of players queuing up in the middle. Sancho's one of them, free header. And uh, that's how quickly a game can change. From one end of the pitch to the other... I think I'm going to make some subs here. Almada and Adiemi, not really having great games for us, unfortunately. I mean, who is this on here? I guess, I guess it's on Luca Dinu, right, to pick up his man. I mean, the fact Jaden Sancho's winning a header in the penalty area is kind of concerning. We're going to make some subs here. In terms of what we're going to do, I am going to bring in Benjamin Sesco. I think, in this game. Sesco was playing really well at the start of the year, then picked up an injury for two months with his torn hamstring. So we're going to bring him into the team. Elsewhere, at centre attacking mid, I'm going to actually just move Musiala forward and slot Taliso in at box-to-box -box midfielder. I feel like Taliso is a bit of an unsung hero. He's still a useful player for us. He's not perhaps of the quite the quality I would like now. But in this kind of game, I still feel like we can bring him on to facilitate some moves higher up the pitch. Corner for us on the far side. Luca Dini is going to whip it in. Calvert-Lewin, oh my word, what a header that is. Anything that Jadon Sancho can do, DCL can do better. The delivery by Luca Dini here is actually, well, really good. I mean, we've signed him for his set pieces, so you'd hope they'd be good. It's a glancing header across goal. He could not have picked a better spot to head it into. With 20 minutes left of this game, maybe slightly against the run of play and how this second half's gone, we have retaken the lead. Immediately called into some defensive action as the ball's going to be whipped in. Rashford, Cavani finishes it. The flag is up. VAR, I really need you to do me a favour here. I think he was behind the ball, but as we've established in this series, I am useless when it comes to VAR stuff. And, uh, well, uh, again, I am useless when it comes to VAR stuff. Don't, ma don't make me a referee. Okay, that makes more sense. I thought Cavani was behind the ball which he was, was Marcus Rashford's initial header that was offside. Five minutes left of this game. I think it's time just to time waste a little bit. We have not long left in this game to hold on. Both teams have had a goal disallowed for offside. We are still in the lead here, holding on for dear life. Can we get the job done? It's not a pretty end to the game, but it's an end to the game we will take. We win this match 2-1. Calvert-Lewin 
Uh, and Liveramento with the goals. Liveramento. If you had Liveramento to score first, you've probably won a lot of money on your bet because that was not necessarily the expected result. You can see with that, we now pull ahead of Manchester United in fourth by a fairly healthy margin, seven points ahead of them with 17 games left. Unfortunately, Liverpool with a game in hand, still eight points adrift. Much like last year, I think it's going to be difficult to chase them down. And also, Adiemi wants a new contract, but he wants it with the release clause. And it's just the same release clause that he's already on. I'm not, I'm not, not giving him that deal. He can jog on. So looking ahead to games on the horizon, we're going to come back for the games against Liverpool and Atletico Madrid next time. Both away from home, that first leg of the Champions League could prove critical. Meanwhile, in the Premier League, that game against Liverpool might be kind of our last shot to realistically catch them. Whether or not we do transfer business between now and next episode, you will have to wait and see. There isn't really any transfer budget. We did get the wage budget increased recently, so I can give myself a little bit of money. I'm not really convinced that £20 million buys us an upgrade, though, when it comes to our current squad. Thank you for watching as always. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments who your player of the season so far is. Is there anyone here who I've not bigged up enough? Maybe I missed them out today. Maybe there was a player who deserves more respect. Let me know them. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. And until then, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.